I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. We guys are doing fantastic today. We've got a fun video today, and this is more like a podcast format, and you just hopefully you enjoy the game and also uh, enjoy the conversation in the background, and maybe we can uh, start something new here where you address some of the concerns and situations and things to open up great discussion, uh, and hopefully Wargaming uh, watches us and listens to us, spreads the, spread the word around town, and uh, hopefully things get better from this. But as always, if you see value in the channel, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support of 4,000 subs. Do another premium giveaway, and we can't thank you guys enough for helping us build this channel, uh, build the community making a better place and like i said we're trying to conquer the toxicity inside of uh, the game um honestly i think it's it's getting better uh but really there can still be improvement where uh, some people are just fed up yelling at everybody and so forth you've seen probably some of the <laughs> the videos out there a lot of these youtubers um you know uh flambass flamu trend uh i see lower bound by the guys i watch uh have addressed some of these concerns and you know, handle it very professionally and just we want to make it a better place as always. And I'm always professional. Um, I'm, a, I'm an officer and a gentleman. And I also want to convey that to the rest of uh, the Wargaming community. So let's get to it. Uh, so the biggest question is right now, I think today's topic is talking about uh, why are there so many blowout matches and what can we do to overcome them? And uh, I'll read to you this time uh, from... Uh, again, we're using hypothetical names here. I'm not going to use real player names. And this is kind of sentiment upon maybe the community as well as just your observations when you're playing the game. And I know you guys that have watched the channel usually typically are players that play the game. Uh, I haven't met anybody that's watched this channel that says I don't play it I mean, just for pure enjoyment. But uh, let's let's talk about it. So the biggest one is, again, why uh, the biggest conversation is why are there so many blowout matches? And we're going to use hypothet two hypothetical players. Uh, Jamie and Morgan, we'll use that and we'll talk about what they've said and then we'll discuss later on as you enjoy the background video as well. And right now the question is, uh, was stated, the blowout phenomenon, what's going on in World of Warships and why do we have so many blowout matches and what can we do to con to overcome them and maybe help Wargaming. So uh, Jamie starts saying like, hey, uh, you know, why are there so many blowout matches? What's up with those? Well, what's going on? And Morgan is going... Morgan replies, yeah, it feels like every other game is over in the first five minutes. One team just steamrolls the other, and before you know it, it's literally, you've seen it, 12 to 4, and game's over, and it's kind of frustrating, honestly. Jamie goes, absolutely, and it's not just you. Blowout seems to be more common these days, but the big question is why. Like, what has changed? Uh, Morgan, you know, answers, I think it's a big part of the skill gap. You've got experienced players who know all the ins and outs of the game, and then you've got newer players who are still figuring things out. When those two groups end up on opposite teams, it can lead to some pretty lopsided matches. Jamie, you know, agrees, definitely. The skill gap is a huge factor, but I think it goes beyond just individual players' skill. I mean, the meta has shifted uh, to, I would say, to the right of, uh, you know, player base. Like, ships have become more specialized, and team coordination is more important than ever. If, you know, one team knows how to work, together and the other doesn't it can get pretty ugly fast you know morgan says yeah and when you add in things like carriers and submarines it just adds more complexity to the game i mean some players are really good at using those classes to their full potential but others not so much it feels like if you have one team with a really strong cv player and the other team doesn't that game's uh over right there right Jamie uh, agrees and nodding and then it says, hey, that ties into another issue, matchmaking. It's not perfect. And sometimes you end up with one team that's way stronger than the other, whether it's because of skill, uh, skill gap or ship lineup. Uh, when one team has a clear advantage, it often snowballs into a blowout. Morgan uh, frustratedly uh, replies, yeah, I think what makes it worse is that blowouts aren't fun anymore. The losing team feels demoralized and winning doesn't just get much satis uh, any kind of satisfaction from an easy win, right? You know, it's like, where's the challenge? Where's the excitement? We've already steamrolled. I really haven't fired my guns. Uh, Jamie says exactly. World of Warships is at, is at its best when the matches are close, when te both teams are fighting tooth and nail every inch of the map, but when one team dominates from the start, it robs everyone of that experience. Morgan says, yeah, so what the solution is there anything the devs can do to reduce the number of blowouts you know jamie's sitting there and sighs well that's a tough one i think there's a few things that could help the better matchmaking is one but that's an easier said than done another thing could be changes to how ships are balanced maybe by giving weaker ships more tools to survive and contribute even if they're outmatched morgan and uh replies again what about encouraging better team play maybe through incentives or better communication communication tools, things like you see in Battlefield or Call of Duty, where supporting your teammates actually rewards you with not only in-game points, but actually overall impact of the battle. If players work together more, it could help prevent one team from snowballing so easy. I like that idea, uh, Jamie replies. The more players work together, the less likely they are to get caught out of position or overwhelmed. It is a team game after all, right? 
Uh, Morgan laughingly says, yeah, uh, but <laughs> getting random players to work together, that's the real challenge, isn't it? Um, true enough, Jamie replies. Hey, it's something to strive for. In the meantime, I guess we just have to roll with punches, trying to learn uh, from each other every match, and hopefully have a more balanced game. Morgan grins and says, hey, if all else fails, there's always the next game, right? Just hit and get out, go to port and hit next, right? And Jamie replies, exactly. All right, that's all uh, we have for that. But that's pretty much, um, you know, their conversation wrapping up right there. So let's address some of the things that they talked about. So the first thing blatantly obvious is matchmaking. I know when we play clan battles and... Uh, we have uh, some players that have the mods, uh, you know, Aslane's mods uh, loaded. If you guys don't know what that is, Aslane mods is a, um, a modification that you can download on your program. Of course, make sure you scan for viruses and everything, of course. So you can run the program. And then, of course, it allows you to uh, add little modifications to the game uh, display, a user interface, and lets you see different um, uh, examples of, uh, you know, battle sequences or maybe you have a, a uh, maybe uh, buffs. That allow not buffs. I'm sorry. What's the word? Uh, you can see uh, different aspects of the game user interface allows you to increase your game. For example, if you look at the top of my screen, you can see a you know countdown timers uh, to show you how many ma uh, minutes are in favor of your team winning, who is in the lead of points, uh, how many points are taking away. Uh, RPF indicators. Uh, if, for example, you can see where. Uh, different designs of RPF, maybe different recticles. You can see right here, I have a smoke generator. I mean, this is, these are modifications that don't come with the game uh, right off the bat, off the shelf. They are little additions uh, that you can add on to enhance your gameplay. Uh, so uh, going back to that is uh, basically, you know, people can see where people are level-wise, skill gap-wise. I mean, I think the biggest thing... Uh, people judge based on win rate. Uh, when you first join the game, you look at the player's win rate in random battles, and if normally if you see it below 50%, people automatically assume, hey, you're a terrible player, right? Well, I don't know. I don't really um, care about your win rate. I don't really care about my, my ranking, whatever, in the game anyways. It doesn't matter. Uh, I don't get anything out of it. But it gives a kind of a player base the, the general uh, consensus of where you at are in the game. If you're about a 65, 75, 80% Uticum player, and they're probably going to go, okay, we have a, probably a, a good player on this um, this map or this game right here. And then if you are below 50% in a randoms game or they look at how many times you've played that ship and they, they judge it based off that, they can determine, okay, are you going to be a good player on my team? And what people see is like normally they're stacked up against a lot of under 50% players on one side and the other. How do we solve this problem? Well, I don't think we really can. Uh, I, I don't know if it really matters. And this is my personal opinion. I just don't think that even if the game like Call of Duty, Battlefield, I think... They do rank players based on certain aspects of your level of gameplay, how many times you played. Uh, that is a lot of coding. There's a lot of um, you know requirements for the game to understand and to update, rather than just hey, we're. They're, I think Wargaming is just trying to fill up a lobby and get the thing going because with the decreasing amount of players in the game due to people just quitting and not playing again, I think Wargaming wants uh, quantity over quality, and I think they just want to get the game going. Hey, how many shits? I mean, you've seen some of the algorithms that they talked about in Reddit where they're like, hey, let's just fill up the the uh, the room with a certain amount of type of ships. There has to be a carrier here. There has to be a submarine here. How many? And there has to be a destroyer here and a cruiser and so forth. And they just fill them up. And, and to avoid waiting a long queue wait times, they just want to just literally get guys going into the, game, the match and just get them in and get it going and so forth. And that's it, right? So um, that's kind of... Uh, where the, the the situation of the matchmaking kind of thing is which i think is just non-existent i don't think wargaming cares honestly about the matchmaking they just want to get the game going so people aren't complaining about long wait queues now how would you solve this you would say well let's have an algorithm or you know ai or whatever nowadays uh review the player's stats and just judge based on that to balance the game out like if you are at 50 percent and above, then there should be at least a 50% and above um, one every other team, right? And you kind of separate it that way. If you kind of like in school, remember you play dodgeball, you kind of like, oh, okay, I see how many, what kind of players you got. Each guy gets uh, one big guy and then another guy, the next down down the line. And I, I was always the little guy. So they were going, okay, we already got the two little guys left. And let's put you on the last, you guys have been there, right? A dodgeball, like you were, you, you put the little guys at the very end and go, okay, each one of you gets the one of the little guys. So I digress. So, you know, uh, that throws back history right there. But um, anyway, anyways, uh, I think that's probably the only solution that they could really have. Whether or not they're capable of that is up 
to you guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think is the solution to matchmaking because I really can't tell. Just because you have a good ship or a good win range ship, I don't see the difference, honestly, as to how that determines how you play that current match at that moment, right? Because, like, look right now, the Bungo, what's he going to know? He could be an outstanding player, okay? I don't know anything about this player, but um, there's nothing you can do other than run to the back of the map. Uh, we have HE spamming like this, and that's it. It's kind of like, it looks like a blowout match almost, right? We have three cap points, and we're pushing this objective forward, and all the guys are in the back. So... Um, this is what most games look like. Now, to address this concern right here, why are there blowout matches um, where it's literally 11 ships that are still alive and then the rest are in the back and the rest, everybody else is dead? I'll address this one uh, topic and let me know what you guys think. Um, I think it has something to do with the mechanics of how World of Warships is as a game because it's, I think it's way too dependent upon a one particular class of ship. Um, for example, if you lose a destroyer right off the bat, let's say there's only two destroyers, which I think are the best classes in the game. I'm a DD main, so that's my thoughts. And let, you guys let me know what you think. If you lose like one destroyer right off the bat, and that whole flank, literally one flank, one side, doesn't have a destroyer, it literally just scares the rest of the players. Everybody just starts either running in the back of the map, they have no idea what to do, they can't shoot anything because they're not spotting, or they can't see anything, and literally the match is over. As soon as you see a destroyer player die, you already can tell, like, tell me right, let me know, guys, what do you think? I mean, you, you agree with me, right? Like, the fact that most of the time, I've always said that in this game, if you lose a destroyer player right off the bat, it just seems like your your whole game is screwed. It, it goes downhill from there. And that's why I think a lot of players are hesitant to play destroyers, because they're, they're afraid that, oh, man, if I die, I, I literally am throwing the match, or I'm not contributing anything, or it literally, I am that biggest contributing factor to our loss. And I, I don't want to disagree with them, but I would say that it is actually a big factor in the game because I think, honestly, uh, the destroyer player is the most impactful uh, player in the game because it does everything. It, and this is the problem I see with Wargaming because it, re it relies, the, all the ships in the background, like, for example, the battleships, they can't see anything. If they can't see anything, they can't shoot anything. And who is out front spotting because all the battleships are in the back? Well, it's the destroyer player They're, or the submarine player nowadays. It's the new destroyer. They're out front literally leading to spot and they're under, they're, their concealment so low they can, are able to detect other ships without being detected themselves. So there's a little role of stealth gameplay there where you're kind of that forward observer, right? Now, I think this game and an artillery game, just think of an artillery mindset. Artillery guns are worthless without knowing where the target's at and what the coordinates are to fire them. Otherwise, you're just a gun shooting lobbing shells in the air. You have no idea where they're going. So you have a forward observer, a.k.a. the destroyer, and now the today submarines and carriers. Um, you have a forward destroyer. Now, once those that forward observer is eliminated from the game, nobody can see anything. Like, for example, right now, look in the background of the match. The only reason these, some of these ships are spotted is because there's a Ford Observer, the Destroyer, the Submarine, and 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 pretty much that's it. I mean, that's that's all you can do to see the other ship. I mean, and without being detected or risking your ship, that's the name nature of the game. So because the Destroyer is eliminated off the game right off the bat, it just seems like it's a, a, a romful stomp, a rollover, steamroll, because now the other team has the advantage of their Destroyer being alive. They can go out and spot everybody, and all the battleships can't see anything, and shells are coming in like crazy, battleships burn down all of a sudden. Then the cruiser player is then focus fired, and that's the end of the game. There's nobody left to play. That's my first opinion of what I think is going on right now. And then vice versa. Let's say the battleship is melted down right off the bat and you lose all of your battleships because I've seen that a lot of the battleships are one either uh, non-existent because they're in the back of the map and they just are just useless or they're running away, kiting away to the A line or the J line. And then number two is that they're melted down right off the bat. Boom, it's gone. And now the, the destroyers are facing up against, although destroyer is a cool game, they, it can only do so much when uh, you have no battleship support. And then I, I have to say sometimes even the, the cruisers are either one blap right off the map and then you have no radar support or you have no gun power support and all the cruisers are running the back of the map. And God forbid someone picks a Colbert, Austin, or Smolensa gets deleted from the map. Now you have no firepower at all. And you're a destroyer literally holding one entire flank by yourself. So I think, that, again, that, that just this shows you, I think the problem is, is in Wargaming's uh, you know, mentality of World of Warships, the ship is just it is too reliant on another ship. And that's kind of like the nature of what Navy warfare is like because a carrier is useless without its destroyer. A destroyer needs a carrier. It's so dependent upon it that it actually throws the game right off the bat. Um, again, like I said, if you lose all your, all your destroyers right in the first three minutes of the game, you can tell already majority of the time the, the match is going to favor the team with more destroyers that are still alive. Um, vice versa, if you lose all your battleships within the first match of the game, I think the destroyers could go in and cap 
the objectives, but then now they're trying to fend off and play uh, and survive against an entire armada of battleships, radar cruisers, aircraft carriers, or whatever, with a teeny little destroyer. And now they're just kind of not shooting, running in the back of the map, and just playing torpedo stealth gameplay, and that leads to a really boring gameplay. Like right at this moment, right now, as a destroyer player, there's nobody to shoot at, nobody to spot. This is what majority of uh, destroyer torpedo gameplay is like, where you're sailing around the map just being quiet and trying to cap the objective. So uh, I think that's the problem and actually is, is the, the concern because, like, for example, look at other games that are multiplayer. Uh, if in Call of Duty you lose somebody, it's not detriment to the end of the game. Like that one player was not the contributing factor because the, everybody was somewhat of an equal stance of gameplay. Like you, you still had a gun, you still were able to run around, you still were able to get objectives, kill people, and so forth. In World of Warships, the, the, the disparity of the type of weapon system you're using is so drastic. For example, right now, if I just had a carrier right now, I couldn't really do much other than go run around, spot the map, and I would have to move my ship to go cap a, an objective, and they're slow and bulky, right? As a destroyer player, if I'm the last guy on the map and I'm trying to fend off three battleships, radar cruisers, and so forth, I really can't do much other than go cap objectives. You know, as a cruiser player, if I, if I lose a cruiser player, or if I'm the cruiser player and I die right off the bat, I, could, I, I lose the ability. Now, I think cruiser players are kind of the overall big ship that is, it's worth losing. It's okay. Um, maybe a radar cruiser is crucial these days, but honestly... I think the biggest ones is the concern uh, is losing a destroyer and losing a battleship. And then now, okay, if you want to factor in carriers, if you lose a carrier off the bat, most likely the other team has their carrier. And now they got they have free spotting. You see what I'm saying? Now they have free spotting, go around the map and do whatever they want and unabated. And that is the problem, I think, in World of Warships. The game is literally so dependent on one type of class that one being eliminated right off the bat really throws the match off. And it starts this trickle effect down the line. Like, for like. For example, if you lose one ship, uh, one destroyer right off the bat on the, on the, the A side or the, the west side, let's say, for example, right? Now, um, yeah, that whole side doesn't have any spotting. Nobody's capping the objective. And now the entire team on that side just steamrolls over that area. Um, let me start another video here. All right. So here's the, uh, another battle in the background for you to enjoy as well. But again, what we, what we were just talking about was um, the fact that if you lose, like for example, look at this map right here. If I die at uh, the Alpha Cap right here with the Ragnar, if I die, literally Yamato and Ohio are going to run away. And that's kind of like the reaction I've seen most of the time. We're like, okay, the battleships give up because they have no spotting, no destroyer support, and they're afraid of other destroyers torping them. So that literally right there, that little small little aspect right there, because in, in Battlefield or Call of Duty, if you lose a player in a certain area or whatever, it doesn't throw the whole game. Like the, the rest of the team goes that, oh, if I just go over there, I can hold it on my own. In World of Warships, if a destroyer, let's say, for example, I'm in the Ragnar here, if I go to Alpha and I die, the Yamato in Ohio, if they do come to support in the first place, it's so dependent upon that situation right there that they're going to either go to A or they're going to run away. Uh, that, and, and that's the problem. If we lose a carrier right off the bat, now we have no spotting. The other team has their carrier. They can run around the entire map and start bombing the crap out of everybody and spotting everybody, and there's no counter to that. Nor does it matter because the carriers don't fight e each other. It seems like sometimes they some some carriers really will, literally will go off and do on their own thing and play their own little game in their own world. They're not communicating. They're not supporting the team, or they'll just go one. They just want to bomb torpedo ships. And right there, there's no supporting gameplay, no reward for doing anything. For example, laying smoke screens for other ships, or torpedoing a certain aspect, or spotting a destroyer, and so forth. There's no reward for that right off the bat. So. Right there, see, like, for example, this United States should be attacking me and just going for me, right? And, uh, like, I turn on my AA to try to get as many planes down. But if he doesn't come after me, then I have free reign at Alpha, then nobody's spotting me, nobody's uh, attacking me as a carrier. And I think carriers are the anti-destroyer kind of um, tool because they're so broken that they can literally just continuously bomb a... Um, a uh, destroyer and continuously spot me. I have no no defense against. It. Look, I have my AA on, and um, there it is. I'm shooting. Here's another problem. We just carriers are broken. Ball for everybody's complete said it. The carriers are broken right off the bat. Ragnar has some of the best AA in the game. This is all I can do to it. Look, I'm look at the top right of the, the screen. Like I've already put 8,000 damage, 8,700. If I did this to a destroyer, if I could put n about nine to 10,000 k damage off a destroyer right off the bat, that's amazing, right? A one flight of planes from a carrier can do this by himself. Like, watch this. Ouch. Okay, so good thing I dodged that one. But look, I did almost 12,000 damage to a carrier. Uh, not, not to mention he had an invulnerability period there. And watch my other video about that. Link is above and below. Uh, he, I, he had an invulnerability period, invincibility period. That's another problem of the broken game. I already did a video about that. You can talk about that later.
So let's go back to that. So if I die right here at Alpha, literally uh, Yamato, Ohio are probably most likely going to run away. They they are just get, they just gave up this flank because uh, we lost our store. We have no spotting. Uh, and oh, by the way, here comes another battleship with its plane. So it can continuously try to attack the destroyer, which is probably what the game is supposed to be like, right? Now, what happens if I'm the only one at Alpha? What if I lose the Ohio and the Yamato right off the bat? Let's say they just got uh, focus fire down, spammed to death, and they die. Now this Austin in front of me, along with the main and the Colombo, could you just steamroll over Alpha? This whole flank is done, and then they flank in from the north, kill all our teams from the back, and then the game's over. I mean, that's normally what I've seen. Let me know. Is that kind of what you see the natural gameplay of World of Warships is supposed to be like? Um, so I think that's the problem. The biggest problem right there is uh, the matchmaking. Um, just, again, there's new players and, and old players all mixed in together. And again, that is the normal thing of multiplayer game pay. You don't know who you're playing up against. So it's skill gap really doesn't matter too much. But the problem, like I've said, is the, 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 the ships, again, are way too dependent upon each other be, uh, to do anything in the game. If you lose one other players, it causes an entire, like one player can really throw the entire game off, right? If I die right here, I could literally cause an entire loss and everybody's dead and done, right? Now, that, that could be the potential possibility. The other thing that uh, one of the guys, uh, Jamie, talked about was the fact that um, there's not enough, uh, what is it, uh, there's not enough uh, support or I would say capabilities for a ship to survive. For example, the lower uh, armored ships just, you know, don't have enough to uh, survive uh, in certain aspects of there. Uh, I don't know. I, I can only say that everybody has their own gimmick, their own thing. Uh, destroyers have concealment and stealth. Uh, cruisers, uh, light cruisers and heavy cruisers have firepower, radar, and so forth. Battleships have obviously the heavier firepower, but slow reload, but just armor. I think the biggest problem I addressed in my last videos was the fact that battleships don't have enough survivability these days to push forward. And that's why you kind of lead to these stale, you know, stagnant gameplays where people are sitting in the back, reversing the back. For example, look at this. I have two of my battleships where Palmer and Vermont, one Vermont's going to the back of the map, kiting away and just shooting like in, rever in reverse or shooting, kiting away. Palmer is in full reverse. So why are you not playing the game why are you not going forward again that that's the, the stale game that play that you see right here and and now like i'm going to look over here look we already lost our how now what is the enemy team going to do they see oh we've killed an ohio now we can just go bum rush them right now and there's no issue with that right so that's the biggest issue they can steamroll you they got aircraft carriers and so forth they come in and just you know mop up the game now look at this aircraft carrier i shot everything i got at him all my a's on here's his vulnerability period he can't get killed right now and oh my gosh look there he took about 5k right off the room right there. If I could do that to a destroyer, that'd be amazing. For an aircraft carrier to do that with one flight of airplanes, uh, and that is insane right there. But that's the problem, I think, with that. Carriers is another problem I see that um, they just need to... Uh, honestly, it's an anti-ship system. I've said the same thing about submarines. Uh, and, you know, carriers and submarines have caused the gameplay to be way too stagnant, way too... Uh, everybody sits in the back. They don't want to do anything. There's no element of there's a stealth gameplay anymore, but only for the carrier and the submarine itself. Again, they're trying to do this, um, the workup, the, the CV rework. I think that's still in the works, and I don't see anything implementation, implementation happening. And it still doesn't solve the gameplay. Uh, we already talked about matchmaking. We said... Oh, yeah. The, one of the things uh, the guys said, Morgan said, was that it, maybe we need more incentives for better communication and players to work together more again i think that's a very very important aspect because if you see if you ever play clan battles there's communication there now we use discord and everything for communication uh, um i know there's an in-game communication tool that people can turn on but i rarely see anybody uses it other than the people people just type in the chat or they'll uh, actually maybe pointy clicky on the mini map and communicate that way it is a good start, but without communication right off the bat and, and planning, most people, and again, I don't see many much planning in like things like Battlefield or Call of Duty or things like that anyways. I think the simple pointy clicky and just say, shoot this guy or here's where I'm going, that's that's fair enough. But again, there's still an aspect of game uh, teamwork gameplay that needs to be addressed um, because outside of your own ship, you're not really worried about anybody else. You're kind of just you know sailing on your own and you, you just, are, the whole idea is just don't die, right? And like, here, what's the Ohio supposed to do? He's being focused fire down. And this is kind of the nature of why battleships won't push forward, uh, the nature of why battleships are running in the back. And they just nobody wants to do anything. And, you know, and right there, great job. That was fun gameplay for Maine. Uh, oh, I'm getting blown up in the back by a carrier. Nobody's supposed to be shooting at me except for the carrier. 
Uh, again, I think a lot of that is the gameplay. Now, the Bane's probably going to get punished right now because he's the only one pushing forward. Why is the Yamato not pushing forward? See, this is the communication problem right here. If these two were literally communicating and pushing forward, they could have focused fire on the Columbo up to the north and figured a solution out before we get steamrolled over at A because I think we're going to lose the main and Yamato's running away. I, I, on the other hand, have to sit back here and try to defend as the lone destroyer player here to defend Bravo. So... Again, without destroyer uh, play, look how powerful one Shimakaze can do to an entire flank. You see that? One little destroyer can literally cause an entire flank just to be worthless, rendered useless. Players just lose their brain and they run away. And I think that's the biggest problem right there, that the ships are either one way overbalanced or just don't support, uh, are unable to support each other. And I don't know if this is a, just a mechanics of the game itself. Because War of Warships is very unique in that sense because you have such overbalanced uh, type of gameplay. Because, like, for example, let's say World of, World of Tanks. You don't have one tank, and I haven't played World of Tanks, so correct me if I'm wrong. You don't have, like, a super battle tank where the tank literally is like a battleship where it has 12 guns and it's got 100,000 health uh, going up against a little teeny tank that has 20,000 health. I don't think that is the nature of the World of Tanks. Again, I haven't played it. Let me know if I'm wrong. Um, but in World of Warships, look, I'm a destroyer with 22,000 health points. At least this Austin here, he has way better gun power than I do, and he has got 30,000 health. And then meanwhile, there's a Columba that has over like 90 to uh, 90,000 health, I think, or 100,000 to my health. So there is a sense of overbalance right there, where one side has a, or one player has a way cleared more advantage over the other. Uh, and health-wise, gun power-wise, maneuverability-wise, and so forth. Again, I don't know how, if that is counterbalanced with the fact that destroyers can, are stealthier, battleships are bulkier. I don't know. Uh, like that, that is another problem I see in the game. Where again, that one ship is way too overbalanced in the sense of a Shimakaze right there. As you can see can literally hold an entire flank by himself. Now, if the Shimakaze wasn't there, would that have changed the gameplay? And yeah, the battleship probably would have pushed up more at Charlie and Bravo. And if I lost the battleships, right, like I say, if I lost the Vermont and Palmer, I would be the only one over here defending the entire map. And that leads to, again, steamroll. So everything seems to just lead to these steamroll problems where it's either matchmaking, skill player gap, ships are uh, not balanced in a certain way where it gives a player the tools necessary to play the game uh, to counterbalance any kind of swing in the game. And um, let's see, what are the things that I was talking about here? Uh, another th one, another question they thought about was maybe the skill player gap. I mean, it doesn't matter if, if like I said, if if a new player is just, again, it's I feel like you requ it requires almost a PhD level to play this game. And that's scary because nowadays you have new players that want to play the game. They want to get interested in it. And the skill, skill gap is so big because you can literally rank up to tier 10 right off the bat, you know, in a super quick fashion and not even know how to play the game. And that leads a lot of frustration with players. You see a lot of toxicity in that sense. Hey, what are you doing? Go back to playing co-op, whatever you see all in there. You guys know what I'm talking about. People are yelling at each other in the map and it, it leads to such quarreling and just, and that's with any game, okay? I'm not saying this is the only game, but I see it a lot more in World of Warships. Like, what are you doing? Why aren't you doing anything? Look at this. Look at this. this is kind of like another steamroll right here. Look, the other team only lost two ships, and, and you already know where this game is going before the game's even over because there's just not enough, you know, players in the game to survive anymore. And boom, there he goes down right there. So that's my thought. Um, uh, th that's just the beginning of this podcast. Talks about uh, addressing some of these questions of why are there so many blowout matches? What can we do to solve this problem? Honestly, again, I think that they, Wargaming really needs to reevaluate re the mechanics of the gameplay where it, it is, it's coming to this point right here where you're just seeing stalemates or uh, raffle stomps or steamrolls where you might have to change how battleships, cruisers, and destroyers intermingle with each other, address the matchmaking uh, maybe concern of skill gaps and, and that. You need to give a little bit more survivability uh, in a different mechanic. I'm not saying make a ship stronger. I'm saying you need to change the mechanics of the game to allow a little bit better survivability because with the invention of more, more stronger and, and more powerful ships, uh, how is that, you know, offsetting the game? Because as as you get further into the game's development, you're making ships more and more powerful that withstand and counter a lot of the systems from World War One and Two, where you're going like, how am I supposed to play up against these things? Eventually, we're going to lead to missiles and and guided rockets and cruise missiles, right? Uh, hence, that's why we came up with carriers and submarines. Eventually, the game gets, in my mind, they think it's getting boring, where they have to introduce a new gimmick or a new weapon system to draw people to. But I think it's having a counter effect where you're actually causing people to run away by introducing a weapon system like a carrier or a submarine 
that, uh, again, you only get one or two of those or a few of those in the match, while the rest of the players are still the old traditional um, point-click gun artillery gameplay. So, again, that's my thought. This is just a, a beginning conversation. We'll have more of these conversations down the road, and we'll talk about it. But as always, thank you guys for supporting the channel. Again, let me know what um, uh, conversations we should be having, what war game we should be needing to correct these things in the comments below. Uh, leave that uh, like, subscribe button below to support the channel, let us grow, and get this word out to more people so we actually address and talk about it so we have more discussion, more awareness, like they're talking about online, a more uh, uh, an aware society uh, brings up the fact of discussion and maybe this leads to change. Okay, so as always, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing well. If you see me out there, say hi. And as always, thanks guys for supporting the channel and listening. And until next time, we'll do another one of these podcast talks as well in the future. And uh, you guys stay safe and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.